You can also listen to us on SoundCloud at soundcloud.com forward slash the clock cleaners. Hello and welcome to the Clock Cleaners Podcast. I'm Matt. And I'm Keith. And today we're doing a recap of SmackDown Live from November 28th. Yeah, kind of a uh, lackluster episode of SmackDown. Yeah. Again, lots of time to fill, even though they have a pay-per-view. Yeah, but it's still like weeks away. Yeah, it was 17th. Yes. Yeah. yes, 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 I yes. guess. That's Christmas true. Eve is the 24th. So oh, okay. Yeah, that would make sense. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I saw a preview of the card. It does not look good. Well, as it stands, we know AJ and Jinder. Uh-huh. Um, I would assume Charlotte versus, well... Natalia could get her real rematch. I was going to say, is it going to be her? Or are they going to do something with... Um, the ladies? Yeah. Because it it's could be. possible to be a six man, a six woman tag. <clears throat> oh yeah, it could just be that. Mm-hmm. Um, Corbin. Right, no, they couldn't do that because it's Clash of Champions. So I would imagine that they're could have called Survivor Series Clash of Champions. Yes, but in the past they they called it the the one night a year where all the all titles, the titles are, are defended. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So <clears throat> I would imagine they're going to um, stick with that. Probably Bobby, Corbin versus Rude. Yeah, that makes sense. It's not going to be a good match, but. That would oh. be what they're leading to. Um, Usos <clears throat> versus Gable and Benjamin. Yeah. And that would make sense. What are we going to have? Nakamura and Orton versus Owens and Zayn? Maybe. That would unfortunately most likely be the case. Not going to put asses in the seats. No. That's not a very intriguing card. No. All right. There's, anyway. There's really nothing they can do to make it interesting. Not really. So... <laughs> We open the show with a recap from last week. Basically, everything between Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, and Shane McMahon and Daniel Bryan. The, you mean the main storyline of SmackDown yes. for the last three months? And guess what? Unlike Raw, we opened with Shane McMahon. Yes, yeah, so they but, actually followed what they started. Yes, which you pointed out on Raw. They did not do. Yes. Um, yeah, it's kind of the same old stuffs. Mm-hmm. Nothing really too interesting here. Yeah. Shane was disappointed that Dan O'Brien didn't fire Kevin Owens yep. and Sami Zayn. Yeah, he said that he was in the process of firing him them when Daniel Bryan came out and just made a match. Mm-hmm. And then Daniel Bryan comes out and says that he believes in second chances because he's been fired before and on the verge of firing, thanks to the authority, I believe he mentioned. Yes. And then he kind of mentioned that Shane was going to act without thinking and then Shane runs him, out, you know, runs down all the things that they've done to him. Do you remember when he headbutted my father? When I almost died going through that table? It's all Kevin Owens and Sami yeah. Zayn's fault. Yeah, basically. <clears throat> so in the end, Shane makes. Oh well, we already knew that Kevin Owens and Orton were going to have a match, which was going to the main event. Yes, they and already said that. He said that he is banning Sammy from ringside, mm-hmm. and it is now a no DQ match. Yes. Which kind of kind of counter and, the, yeah yeah, mm-hmm. but you know whatever. Yep, yep. It's supposed yeah. to seem worse when it's no disqualification. Yeah, even though technically it's a still on even playing field. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, but I mean SmackDown's open this way for a while now. What Shane coming Shane, out? Yeah, yeah, I know. Because I mean, it's like was, Stephanie's old promos when right, she used to come out. There was a point where both. Sh- Shane and Brian were both kind of hands off, and you just see him backstage to make matches or yep. something like that. And like Kurt Angle does. Yeah. And now, <clears throat> yep, they're there every week. Mm-hmm. I don't get it. Not 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 good for TV. It's called poor writing it's and true. lazy writing. Yes, but obviously they're pushing this as the main storyline. Mm-hmm. Um, for whatever reason. Yeah, like you said, is there going to be a big payoff? Uh, I'm gonna. It, it looks like they're going to have some kind of, I don't know, feud between Dan O'Brien and Shane. Are they gonna... <laughs> but there's going to be no match there. Yeah, exactly. So it's so kinda... it's, it, that doesn't make sense. So it's, it's very confusing where, yep. they're, where they're heading, but yep. whatever. So we go uh, backstage where Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens are walking, complaining about the decks being, or the cards being stacked against them. Mm-hmm. And up walks Daniel Bryan. And they start complaining to him, saying this is unfair, and that he's got to change the match, to which Daniel Bryan says, no. Hell no. Yep. So he, he wants to give them a fair shot, but he doesn't want to <clears throat> give them any kind of special treat. Yeah. Basically. Pretty much. Which yeah. makes sense. Oh, know, absolutely. He's, he's, a, he's being the neutral party. Yeah. 
but I mean, like we were talking off camera about the whole Daniel Bryan thing. I mean, don't you think that would kill you if you were not able to wrestle and all your friends were there able to wrestle? It depends. You know what I mean? I mean, it's not the same. It's true. Um, but it depends on how he looks at the whole situation. Because there's the thought of, okay, even if he's capable of wrestling, is it going to make his future worse? Mm. And stuff like that. So. I mean, yeah, how much more money is he going to make in the company wrestling? Probably it, his contract's probably very similar because he's under the same contract that yeah, he was, was when he was yeah, wrestling. I'm sure he was signed for a good amount of years. Yeah, so... It's not like he's probably making... Which kind of wrestling contracts are not signed, uh, talked about that often? No. How long they're signed for the company? They're they're talked about in a kayfabe sense more than they are legitimate. Yeah. Like, sometimes it'll come up that they're expiring soon. Right, yeah. But when they're being negotiated on, it's ne- never... Never. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I guess just one of those things. So, uh, that anyway. brings us to the first match of the night. Yeah, so we got the New Day against... Um, Benjamin and Gable. Yes. Uh, so, the New Day come out with their pancakes again. Yes, uh, they the Usos dumped, were on oh, commentary. Yes, they were. They dumped a box of pancakes on a small child's face. <laughs> there was a lot of pancakes in that box. Yeah. So, they get to ringside, and uh, like Matt had mentioned, the Usos are sitting at commentary, to which Big E goes up to them and pulls out a plate of pancakes syrup <laughs> and something else was there another thing you pulled out um i thought it was just more was pancakes. It just, uh, maybe it was yeah. no silverware though yeah from his <laughs> from his uh nether singlet. regions yeah yes it was really funny and the usos were like really into it, it mm. it's it's great it's crazy how like they hated each other what a month and a half mm-hmm. ago and now they're best friends <laughs> apparently because they have respect now yeah um and then Byron Saxton was going nuts over the pancakes. He's like, "Oh, I want some of those." Mm-hmm. You and, who don't want to eat those. And Corey Graves <laughs> and um, and uh, Tom Phillips are yelling at him to not to not eat the pancakes because you don't know or you you know where they've been. Yeah, me so. and Christine were joking because Christine was like, "Oh, uh, Curtis Axel has you know the neck brace. He must like that on the plane ride since it looks really nice, soft, com- and comfy." And I was like, "Yeah, he probably keeps like snacks in there." And she's like. How does he have room to keep snacks? And then SmackDown comes on. I was like, how does Biggie have a room in his tights to have uh, syrup and uh, two full, uh, plates of uh, pancakes? It was just funny. Yeah, it was really funny. But um, there was definitely an entertaining thing. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, not a whole lot going on here. Oh, no, no. Just because of the simple fact that this was a commercial match. Yes. So start the action, go to commercial, come back. Um, I think both Gable and Benjamin were outside the ring. Hmm. And uh, Xavier Woods hit, what, a suicide plancha over the top rope, right? Something? I don't remember what something he like did. something like that. Yeah. Hit that, throws Benjamin in the ring. They hit the up, up, down, down, or up, down, whatever the hell you want to call it's it. It's up, up, down, yeah. down. And that was the match. Mm-hmm. Benjamin pinned clean. Yes. Not a huge... A little, a, a little bit of a surprise. That part was surprise. Yeah. Part. But, I mean, the New Day is always going to be booked as the top tag team on oh, true. SmackDown, regardless yeah. if they're champions or not. Yeah. So, but yeah, it, it wasn't bad. It was an no. entertaining beginning. Yeah, absolutely. So, look, anytime you put the new day out there, you're going to get Something some entertainment. Good. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, uh, up next, we have. Uh, I just want to make one note is that I don't, I didn't write it down in the notes, but the uh, this week, instead of the Usos doing the WWE shop commercial, it was the new day. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was later Which on. Was, though, yeah, I think. it was much better than yeah. the Usos ones. So. Well, of course. <clears throat> um so so up next we have charlotte and naomi backstage talking about getting payback on uh ruby riot and uh live morgan and sarah logan sarah logan yes um because they have a match later on a six woman tag match mm-hmm. which um, i believe was yeah told we heard about in the beginning of the show yeah right? i think they announced it yeah um and then um natalia walks up mm-hmm. and she's like like i don't care about you guys but I want to, what was it, I want to get... Well, no, no, she said, uh, you, you, Charlotte, you should be glad that they showed up last week because otherwise I would oh, yeah, have taken your title. Yeah. Yeah. And then all of a sudden she, you know, starts talking bad about them and they're all on the same page all yeah. of a sudden and then that was that. Yeah. It was, it was, it was what it was. Yeah. 
nothing special. Natalia being a weird yep. heel. And we got a little Bludgeon Brothers thing saying they're up next. Yeah, it was just them with the hammers on mm-hmm. the camera. <clears throat> and then we got the uh, Hype Bros. Hype Jobbers versus the Bludgeon Brothers. Yes, right. that was it. I, I already knew it from the, from well, the get-go. Yeah, it because was... of the way that the match the week mm-hmm. before went. Um, I don't know. I, I'm... I'm liking what they're doing with the Bludgeon Brothers so far. Well, they, they haven't, haven't done given any... them time <laughs> to, to mess it up. That's, that's true. What and that, that's what we want. <laughs> yeah. So uh, what, hap- what happened was last week, I think Mojo got destroyed. This week, uh, Ryder got destroyed. No, I, I thought it was Ryder again last week. No, I'm pretty sure. It was Mojo. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, Mojo was in the, on right. the yes, outside. Yes, yes, So they did the opposite mm-hmm. of what happened last that's year. That's correct. Um, last year. Last week. Um and then, obviously, Ryder eats the pin after... The double crucifix slam or whatever yeah. you want to call it. I don't know if they actually have a name for the move yet. Probably, Probably not. not. Um, this is a rock bottom. Oh, okay. That's what they... Okay. <laughs> like, it's not a rock bottom. So, uh, after the match, um, Dasha comes in and talks to Ryder, mm-hmm. I believe. And then, yes. and then Mojo shows up a little later. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's like, obviously, we need a change. We've hit rock bottom. And then uh, Mojo... Mojo just attacks him from behind. Yep. And that's when I wrote heel turn. Yes. Yeah. So that happened. Yes. And it, it was only Z- took six months or well, whatever it was. That. Three, three months. And it wasn't Zack Ryder who <clears throat> made the heel turn. It was Mojo. Right. Because they were hinting at Zack Ryder oh, yeah, doing it. Was, it it yeah. was pretty obvious that that was mm-hmm. what they were going to do. Yep. And then they went, nope, we're going to go- pick the other guy. Well, this is the time to do it. Why? Because there's not much going on. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. You mean now is a time oh, I didn't, to waste I didn't, TV? Yeah. I'm like, there's really nothing that they, they can really gain <laughs> yeah, from no, this. No. But, um, but yeah. <clears throat> then we go backstage, and <clears throat> Kayla's back there. The uh, other the one, announcer. Yeah, yeah, the other announcer, since Renee isn't there. Yeah. And uh, he asks, she asks Mojo why he attacked Ryder, and he basically says, the landscape has changed. Mm-hmm. that was it yeah so i don't know if that means that <clears throat> he's gonna be a singles competitor now well <clears throat> he was getting somewhere when he was a singles when it's, Ryder was hurt it's true he was doing more he than won the andre the giant <clears throat> battle royal yeah so that's something he he uh he was hanging out with his buddy uh Gronk. Rock, the Gronk. yeah yeah <clears throat> anyway yep so uh, now we have another interview in the back. Yep. Dosh is interviewing Bobby Roode. Mm-hmm. And she asks him about Baron Corbin striking him last week and if it was accidental or not. Mm-hmm. He says he was not sure. But Corbin calling him absent-minded. Now that, that wasn't accidental. It's true. It was mean. Mm-hmm. It hurt his feelings. Yes. He cried all yeah, night long. If I know one thing about Bobby <clears throat> Roode is that he's very sensitive. Yes. <laughs> That's true. So he basically says that he's coming for Corbin's title. Yes. Then Corbin shows up. He's like, I'm not scared of you. And then <laughs> Bobby's like, all right, if you're not scared, put your title up tonight. And Corbin goes, no. <laughs> Shakes his head yes and then says no. Yeah. Then that was that. That was all we saw of these two. Bobby oh. Roode was ready to go. Oh, Baron. Mm-hmm. So, well, yeah, but obviously that's going to be the next feud. Yeah. So. <clears throat> It makes um, sense. Yeah. Well, it's it's a good opponent and for him. They were able to lead in with something very small. Mm-hmm. It was a, it was like a, a minor thing that otherwise would go unnoticed. Exactly. So it's always nice when little things set up feuds. Yeah. Um. So up next we have the highly anticipated, <clears throat> the Singh brothers again. You don't like the Bollywood Sings? <laughs> <laughs> against AJ Styles in a handicap <clears throat> match. Yeah. So um, at when uh, the Sings come out, they bring out Jinder too. He comes out and he starts running his mouth about how he's going to win back his title at uh, at Night of Champions, Clash of Champions, Clash of Champions, whatever. It's not the same thing. <laughs> um, it's not because it was that, the same thing. They wouldn't have changed it. That's true. And then the Clash of the Champions was WCW's version. Yeah. So they kind of put the oh WWE. Yeah. Uh, anyway, mm. so AJ comes out, and then he gets attacked by all three of them before mm. the match even starts. Oh, yeah. Um, and then, then he's beaten down. Was he outside the ring? Or is he just down in the ring? And then we go to commercial. Then we come back, and AJ's in one corner, and the Sings are in the other. And then yeah. AJ's like, all right, I'm ready to go. <laughs> and then we start the match. Mm-hmm. Um, the Sing brothers were able to 
capitalize on, on the guy who had just gotten beaten yes. up by three people. Mm-hmm. It's a huge surprise. Yes, the numbers game worked against AJ mm-hmm. in the beginning. He started getting offense. And uh, I guess we get into the corner, and both of the Singh brothers were trying to suplex him off the top. Mm-hmm. AJ knocks one of them down. Then the other one decides to go for a Hurricane Rana. AJ <laughs> holds on to his legs, turns it into a second rope styles clash onto the Singh brother laying down. Yeah. One, two, three. It is funny why or <clears throat> how he ended up being in that <laughs> position. You know what it I mean? worked. Yeah. It looked good. <laughs> it's just like, why would you go for a move that involves you setting yourself up mm-hmm. for one of his finishing Finishers. moves? Yeah. So come on, you can't think. It's true. Just act. Yes. Um, <laughs> it's always the same Sing brother that gets the Styles Clash too. Sure. I, yeah. I never really. <laughs> I don't pay that close attention. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm guessing. You know. All right. You know how to take the move. Okay, you're getting it done to you all the time. Well, it makes sense. Not like Ellsworth when he almost died. Yeah, it's true. Multiple times. Right. Really? Did, he, didn't AJ it was just hit the one? No, that was in the ring. The other one was when he did it off the the steps oh and i think ellsworth almost hit his head on the steps oh i didn't yeah i don't remember that yeah i think that was <laughs> obviously during the uh aj and dean feud. yeah 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 so uh after the match aj leaves the ring mm-hmm. and then ginger's in the ring with the Singh brothers and then he just beats the crap out of them any reason why not no but it's just gonna make them look weak when they join up with him again next week all right so if they do not <laughs> join up with him what are they gonna do 205 uh, Live? Maybe, or get released. I guess. Well, but when did... No, they started last... They were in NXT for a while. They were in the, the Cruiserweight Classic. That's why they joined yeah. WWE. Okay, yeah, so they were signed right from that. Yes. Gotcha. And then they opened the 205 Live, which was I think it was a year yesterday, or day before, or something like that. Really? It's, yeah, it's been a year. I, thought yeah. it was, I actually thought it was longer than that. Mm-mm. Um... So, uh, but yeah, at least they, that's what somebody had posted on Twitter. Um, but yeah, they they just started as jobbers, and uh, so they started as jobbers and gonna end as jobbers, yes, pretty much. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know, I, I would assume that they would stay with him. I mean, well, that's that's what I mean, yeah. I, I like, mean, there's really no reason for them not to, yeah. It's like it's like they have Stockholm syndrome, <laughs> I guess that's true, yeah. Afraid. Like he's mean to us, but we, we love him anyway. <laughs> he's mean and he hurts us, but we feel safe with him. Exactly. Ah, special. All right. So uh, up next, <clears throat> Dasha interviews the NXT women. Yes. Um, obviously being Ruby Riot, Liv Morgan, and uh, uh, Sarah Logan. There you go. Um, and then <clears throat> they they introduce themselves mm-hmm. as the Riot Squad. Yes. Um, so. We obviously knew heading Not into the Ruby this Tourage. week. Yes. Go heading into this week that the the NXT call ups were very similar in in their It was pretty much a mirror execution. Yeah. Um and obviously there was, the A show got the uh, better of the well, two yeah. teams. But my hope was that okay, they're similar now. Hopefully this week they'll either branch off completely mm-hmm. or they'll be connected in some way yep but instead it was like you said where raw or smackdown just imitated exactly what raw that was did. it so that's not good that's super lazy writing yeah and insert name here it was literally the same sheet yeah. and they said here you go well not really the match was obviously yeah actually happened this week but, but. still it just it doesn't make any sense why they're doing this unless there's some kind of end game but i would like to see like some kind of effort because right now it it feels like they're literally well, copying this is it's gonna be the same crap that we've had when was the last when when have we seen tamina last when did we see Car- was carmella there last week no no lana there no so where well, you're just replacing the three women it's true that you have mm-hmm. and the problem, I don't know, it's it's weird, because SmackDown, you have three women that you technically have to protect. Mm-hmm. In Charlotte, Becky, Charlotte, and, and Naomi. You don't really yes, have to protect. No, but I mean, she was a former champion. Now she's just a, uh, an entrance. Yeah. She, that's literally her. It's true. But um, I mean, Also, they wrote Becky off because she got 
injured. Injured, yeah, because she's going to be in the Marine 37 or whatever number well, they're up to. also, just, like, from the attack last week, that was her case. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. no, I know. But, I mean, I'm just saying why. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, but, yeah, they, uh, they say that they're here to make, uh... They're not here to make friends. They're not here to make friends, and they're here to, uh, turn SmackDown Live upside down. Yes. So... And they're not here to audition for Total Divas, either. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, well, it is true that for the most part, it's pretty the much Smackdown, just SmackDown people yeah. on. Aside from Bliss and well, Jax, right? It's it's not so much now. Yeah. But like last year, it was because it was all. Yeah, it's true. Because Nikki was on SmackDown mm-hmm. and Natalia. Uh, Renee technically was more mm-hmm. affiliated with SmackDown. Yep. Um, Lana. Lana was not on SmackDown last year. Oh, no, that's right, yes. yes that's <laughs> she was right. the only one on mm-hmm. Raw. Yes, and Maurice was on SmackDown. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, uh, anyway, moving on. Yeah, that so, led us to the six-woman tag. Yes. And then the this, match that this, actually happened. This was this was something else. Um, it was, it was, I liked what they were going for. Yeah. The execution, just execution wasn't great. Okay. So, I guess Natalia started the match out. I don't remember who she was against. Liv? Liv start the match? There's a l- um, No, I think Ruby started. Did she? Okay. I'm well, pretty it, sure Ruby It didn't started. matter anyway. Yeah. So once Natalia tagged out, she dropped off the apron and said, you know what? Screw you guys. Yeah, I'm she, going home. She got beat up a little bit. Yeah. But she didn't start, though. I think Charlotte I did. Thought, oh, maybe they tagged in. Yeah, she tagged okay. in very early. Um, I just knew that as yeah. soon as she tagged out, she was gone. Yeah. She, she left them, which we all kind of expected to happen. Yeah. You put in a heel with two faces. Yes. Yeah, they're like, oh, I'm, I'm out of here. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> um... So, and then... Charlotte was in the ring. Yes. Naomi was on the apron. So, Logan and Liv, Liv drop off the their, the apron on their side and go around and attack Naomi, throw her down. This is when it got A little bad. ugly. Yeah, it, it just did not look pretty. Um, so, they knock down Naomi. They take the, uh, the top of the steps. Mm-hmm. I think they... Th- what they i think they threw her into the guardrail at this point oh yeah they did yeah, which they, did they not look, look good no. no and then as she's down they pick up i guess they move the top of the yeah. steps they put the bottom of the steps they stand it up and then they throw her into it yeah. and she clearly hit her head on it um so she's down again they set up the steps leaning up against the barricade mm-hmm. And then Sarah Logan does the, the catapult, the catapult into it, mm-hmm. and uh, I'm assuming she protected herself. Obviously, I would but, assume so. Um, so you that, get a trainer comes out from ringside, goes check on her, yeah. and then everybody from the back, the stretcher comes out. So the action goes back to the ring, and yeah. now it's three on one. Yes. Charlotte's able to fend them off for a little while. Numbers game overtakes her, and I think what uh, Ruby. Hit her finisher on it. Yeah, her? it's like a some kind of kick. Yeah, it's like yeah, a, an enziguri kind of. Kind of, but not to the back. Yeah, but to the front. Yeah, I I didn't even see. Yeah, honestly. I don't think it has a name. So. Probably not. But yeah, she hits finisher, and that's the match. Mm-hmm. So yeah, uh, it's something. It, it was not a very good execution. No, but what are you gonna do? Yeah, I, I mean, I just... all we can do is hope that they're going to lead in a different direction, or ultimately, like I said, have the two teams be affiliated in some right. way. Because at least then you're creating a, a purpose. Mm-hmm. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, so you guys are taking over here. We're taking over there. Yeah, well, it'd be more like Paige is like in the, charge of yeah. all of it, or someone else. There you go. I don't know who else would make any sense, but it'd be it'd be cool. Hmm. Also, it, it could lead to... Stephanie. That wouldn't make a whole lot of sense, though. Um, it'd be cool if they do... This leads to, like... Now, had the women of... lost, the Raw women lost, then Stephanie could have brought up... Oh, you she, mean... Yeah. The, um, the Survivor the, Series, yeah. I guess that would make sense. Right. But, yeah, right now, the way everything was, it wouldn't make mm-hmm. any sense. Uh, so... Yeah. So up go, next. Yeah, we go backstage, and uh, Kayla's outside Randy Orton's dressing room, locker room, whatever the hell you want to call it. Orton opens the door, walks out, and just keeps walking. Yeah. He was <laughs> on a mission. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, then we go to ringside, and uh, 
the commentators say, all right, and the highly anticipated fi- fashion files. Yeah, ba- Byron was very excited. Oh, yeah. And Corey was like... <laughs> so this was actually a really good episode of Fashion Files. Well, take us through it. So um, <laughs> this one was called Sawed, mm-hmm. which is obviously a parody of Saw. So it opens in, um, if you've seen the movie, like the little... It was like a bathroom, right? Yeah, it's kind of like, like a shower bathroom. or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, and the, uh, Tyler Breeze, uh, Fandango, and Victor and Connor are all t- um, chained to the wall. Mm. And then on a tablet that's uh, hooked up <laughs> to the wall says that you must destroy something you love to um, <laughs> in order to escape. Yeah. And then they're all looking around, and in the on the floor in the room is the horse head. Mm-hmm. Um Tully, Tully, I think that's what they called it. So we see flashbacks of Fandango riding the horse and loving the horse, basically. (laughs) Yeah. And then, uh, what do you say? I guess I'm going to have to beat this dead horse, right? Something like that. Yes. (laughs) So they start beating on the the horse head. And the stuffing's going everywhere. Yeah. And then I think uh, Victor grabs the key and then Fandango rips it out of his hand. He (laughs) unlocks the two of them. Mm -hmm. And, oh, and apparently they're, uh, if they, they had one minute Yes. To, to escape yes before the poisonous gas filled up the room yes so um fandango and tyler breeze are free and <laughs> the, the sentry go uh, to save yourselves and then they're like okay and then they go to leave <laughs> they come back and apparently fandango forgot his hat yep he's like oh and the ascension go oh I, I knew our best friends were gonna come and save us <laughs> And then Fandango's like, "No, I forgot my hat." We're He's like, friends. "Oh, but but well, it, I'm 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 glad that we sacrificed ourselves for our best friends." And Tyler Breeze goes, "We're not friends," and then they leave. It was great. It was short and sweet. That's that's what they they accomplished here. Very entertaining. Yeah. So and that brought us to the main event: Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn. Yes. No DQ match. Yes. Yeah. Um, so the match starts off obviously in the ring. We quickly move to the outside, which. Orton, I think, started throwing Owens into the announce table. Yeah, he uh, really had his way with Owens mm-hmm. at the beginning of that Oh, match. yeah. And then he found a kendo stick. Mm-hmm. And he, he started beating, beating, beating the for crap out of yeah. him with it. Yeah. Uh, Owens yelling obscenities. <laughs> Constant beeping. censoring. Yeah, everything. I know, right? It's terrible. Um, and then, Oh, yeah, he beat him with the stairs first. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. And then the kendo the stick. And hit him and then, yeah. and they go to the other side, and they go in the ring, and then Owens rolls out to the other side, finds his own kendo stick, then he starts beating up Orton, and then they battle into the crowd. They go back uh, up around to the stage area. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, Sami Zayn comes out. Surprise, surprise. Yes, he hits him with the most tender chair shots I've ever seen. <laughs> it was soft. Uh, like, it was, it, like he was barely was touching like... him. Yeah, it was bad. Yeah, I'm like, why is it? Why is he doing that? Because he he hit him like two or three times, and every time it looked like he barely touched them. Yeah. Um, and then at this point, they make their way back into the mm-hmm. ring. Uh, is it when Orton hit the draping DDT? Yes, because mm-hmm. Owens tried to get him, but or I think uh, Owens was going back into the ring. So That's Randy right. beat the him. Qu- yeah, Randy beat him back into the ring, and Owens is going back in. He hits him with the draping DDT. Mm-hmm um and then i think owens hits a ddt of his own yeah i think so and then owens ended up hitting a super kick and then a frog splash for the win yes so uh that was that was it that was everything and it's about time owens uses his strongest asset to win matches his weight yeah yeah you can have that belly flying at you that would definitely hurt Mm -hmm. it's true but yeah i mean just just kind of lackluster overall yeah, well, it's a long time before a pay-per-view. Well, you have it's like three, three weeks, weeks still. Yeah, that's true. Um, but, I mean, it's just, there's no, we didn't even see Nakamura this week. It's true. We didn't see Ty. Nope. No we Dolph. Didn't, we didn't see. Uh, <laughs> Seen him in 10 commercials, but, you know. Yeah, well, yeah, because there's uh, Cricket, Cricket Wireless. Yeah. I don't know. <clears throat> um, it's just like. You have this time. At least Raw is utilizing what they have on the roster. Yeah. And these guys know we're just going to throw Randy Orton in meaningless matches. It's true. But we got, you know, squash mash. Uh, squash mash. Squash mash. Squash mash. Um, basically two. I mean, 
the Singh Brothers and AJ wasn't very long. Oh, yeah. No, that wasn't really like meant to be a real Two or match. three minutes. <laughs> yeah. It's like a Cruiserweight segment on Raw. It's true. But uh, I don't know. Yeah. It, it's another example of SmackDown's weak storytelling. Yeah, and their limited roster, too. Yeah. But they're not using the roster. I, I know. I know. <laughs> or their limited use of the roster. Yeah. We'll go with that. So. But, yeah, this is it's, it's going to be hard for them to sell Clash of Champions as... Mm-hmm. A pay per view. It's true, but I mean, it's basically going to be an episode of SmackDown. The good news for them is that they don't need to sell it. It's true because they don't. But do we it. don't want to be looking at empty seats in the audience either. I don't care. It doesn't matter. <laughs> me. I get stuck watching it anyway. Yeah, I guess so. that's true. Yeah. So, so uh, yeah, that was our SmackDown review. Yes. If you liked what you saw here, please like, share, and subscribe. Bye. Bye.